down through the layers and layers of grease. Yeah, found the original color under there. Obviously it's been repainted at some point because this is a much darker green. Anyway, it's a cool old color. Yeah. If we paint it, if we ever repaint it, we should do something similar. So in the last shot, you guys might have noticed that the whole tunnel is missing. And that's because it's cardboard. Just straight up cardboard, nothing else. Which is light, I guess, but it didn't hold up well to years of night. Ethan just got done hitting it up with the pressure washer and we realized this thing has mad angle. The drifts are gonna be real. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. That's the most angle I've ever seen on a car that's not modified. <laughs> it's just like crazy. And even some that are modified. I mean, that's a stupid amount of steering angle. <laughs> it's awesome. Next up, pull the engine out of the sled. Oh yeah. Which is gonna be a lot more work than pulling the engine out of this. has an electric dipstick in it. So, uh, I mean, it's just a regular dipstick with a sensor so that if the oil level goes too low, it warms you, which is pretty cool. Cutest little supercharger I've ever seen. <laughs> so cool. Wow, I can actually feel it blowing air on my hand. Just from that. That's how much gear reduction is in there. Hey guys, we're gonna take a quick break from building to talk about the sponsor for this video, Pedal. Now Pedal is a credit card company that wants to help you succeed financially. Now Pedal's awesome because there's zero annual fees and you don't need any credit to actually get the thing. So it's really good for building credit. Pedal wants to help you increase your credit score. That's why they reward you with more cash back when you pay your bill on time. Earn 1% cash back right away and 1.5% when you make 12 on time monthly payments. Pedal can be great for anyone looking to build credit, but make no mistake, Anyone looking for a modern credit card should look into it. Pedal is partnered with Web Bank, member FDIC which issues the cards. As of today, their APRs range from 15.24% to 26.24%. Check out the future of credit. Go to pedalcard.com slash ghpc today to find out more. That's pedal with a T, P-E-T-A-L card.com slash ghpc. Thanks guys, now let's get back to this build. Check this out. So, you'll have seen that the supercharger was right here. Mm -hmm. That's the oil filter. Oh shoot. To change the oil filter on this engine, you would have had to remove the intercooler and the supercharger. Wow. We'll not build it back that way when we put it in the truck. So we got a fancy crane scale from Amazon. It's actually the cheapest one they had, but this is a light power package. Yeah, uh, it's very light. Um, there's only a few more things that have to go on it. And like the clutch is over there. We could set that on top of it and weigh that as well. <laughs> Throw that on there. 201. Yeah. So. We'll just round it and say around, basically a 200 pound engine yeah. and transmission. All right, so we have the original Triumph engine and trans right here. Yeah, we're at 148 pounds and it's not off the ground yet, so. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna pick it up quite like that, but we'll find out. <laughs> oh yeah, it's gaining. 80. <laughs> oh wow. There we go. So it's rounded up to 360. 360. That's 150 pounds heavier but 150 pounds is a good bit. So if this car started out at 1500, I think it started out at like 1550 pounds, give or take. So that puts this down to 1400 pounds, not including any interior weight reduction, which we will obviously have. This thing is awesome. Yeah, and it goes up to 2000 pounds. So we'll be able to yeah. do the whole car when it's done. Yeah, we will. skid steer just <laughs> It's gonna be awesome. It's a good thing Aza's here today because 
I was thinking about this and then had Aza come over here and talk it through with me and we figured out this engine rotates backward. Well, not the engine, the clutch. Because this is a gear drive between the crankshaft and this clutch here, it rotates the opposite direction as the crankshaft. So I had it set up, I was gonna mount it this way with the clutches up front. Well, if I'd done that, we would have been driving in reverse. <laughs> so, now we're gonna spin it around 180 degrees. We're gonna mount it like that, which we'll have a rethink just in case we're idiots, but that should have it driving the right direction and it'll solve some other problems too, like the drive shaft can be shorter now. So, there are some benefits. time over the weekend thinking about this and uh, a little bit of time rearranging the engine and I finally came up with an engine placement and clutch setup that works. But the engine will sit right about where it is which is good because it's very low and very far back in terms of center of gravity and all that. Somewhere right about there um, and I can change its angle and the clutch location a little bit just to get it real close to where the drive line is. And then the output shaft of that, which has the drive sprockets for the snowmobile track, I'll press the sprockets off and then cut it to length, add in another carrier bearing at the end of it, and then basically just weld a, weld a flange that bolts straight to the drive line, and then uh, we'll be good to go. removing the wiring harness because I'm not gonna use any of it. Well, it was under here. I found the uh, high beam switch. Kick it with your foot to turn the high beams on. Well, that's the entire wiring harness minus the uh, rear end, which would just be brake lights and fuel gauge. That's it, whole thing, gauge cluster included. So cool, so easy, Yeah, nice and simple. It'd be awesome if we, we could reuse these gauges, but first off, the RPMs top out at six, which is about half as far as they need to go. These are all very analog, so converting them to digital would be too much work. So, if anybody needs gauges for their Triumph, hit us up. We learned our lesson on that one. <laughs> yeah. Because you look in there, you don't want to stick your toes in the clutch. No, that would destroy anything in its path right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a good day, but then it was not a good day. <laughs> in case you guys don't know what we're talking about, snowmobile scooter. <laughs>
we pause this series of Ethan Cam to show you the very first weld on the Spitfire. Very first, as soon as I can find my other welding glove. Today's day two of engine mounting. Off to a fiery start. I made a spacer here to keep the um, supercharger in the right place, which is also gonna be our engine mount um, attachment point, because that is the original engine mount for the snowmobile. And then Sam's working on that while I'm working on this uh, uh, supercharger mount bracket, which I'm making out of aluminum because I can. And this is Sam, guys. You've probably seen him in the last couple videos. Good old fashioned CAD work. So we knew the gas tank being all crusty on the inside is why it wasn't going well, but look at the big black chunks flying out of that. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's crusty. Yeah, so that's done. That's a good old scrap pile. <laughs> this clutch goes about there. And then this chain case goes on this shaft as if, as it would here, but I need to cut it off here and then weld this end here onto this shaft up here somewhere. While we're talking about this, let's introduce the newest member of the team, this here beautiful lathe. went and bought this yesterday. Um, I don't know how old it is, approximately ancient, um, probably from like the 40s or 50s, something like that, but it all works. And uh, I spent a few hours last night kind of learning how to use it. And um, so I'm gonna need it for a lot of this stuff because I'm making fancy shafts. anything so precise in my life. <laughs> Got our uh, little shaft here. We'll keep those nice and true when I weld them. So I'm working on a uh, straightening, centering jig to weld these. I've got this half inch thick piece of steel, this piece of 3 8 angle, and then I'm gonna weld these two plates on it. And then put a bolt over each one and I can crank it down. And does it fit after all that? It does. Fits rather nicely. Dang. And so there's the addition right there. You can yeah. kind of see the coloring change. It's hard to say just with the speed that my hand can turn it, but that does not look wobbly at all. Yeah, especially if there's another bearing right here, are you kidding me? <laughs> it's gonna be fine. This belt drive CVT can handle a little bit of play, a little bit of imperfection. Uh, it wear the belt out faster, but that's about it versus if you had this slight imperfection going into something with hard gears, it would probably break. I think a term that I saw in a comment 
uh, about the triumph transmission is if we put this much power directly to that transmission, it would experience uh, sudden unintentional disassembly, <laughs> 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 which is very accurate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so freaking cool. You're talking about it this morning and this afternoon. She exists. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I think the uh, drive line will line up with that just fine. Yes. And we'll put another carrier bearing on this little stub here. Right where, right, right near the end where the driveline flange will be just to support the end of the driveline. Something like that. Maybe. Oh, it's going to be so cool. This is getting so real. It's, dude. Okay. So real. This is our last engine mount right here. It's, it's going to be gone. going in this back corner. This, this little extra bracket here is just to help support this. Um, you can see it has a little bit of flex still. That motor mount's completely done. The uh, supercharger, supercharger mount. mount. Yeah, all the motor mounts can unbolt from the chassis and none of them are welded on, so that'll make it way easier to get the engine out. Just need some welding and it'll be done. Oh yeah, so things are looking very real.